Hi guys, my name is Trey. I am a technician in the fleet department here at Command Co. When it comes to maintaining and ensuring the safety of a small generator, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, regular maintenance is crucial. Make sure to check the oil, change the spark plug, and clean the air filter as recommended by the manufacturer. On this unit, we have put these little wing nuts on it so the guys out in the field can have easier access to opening the front panel. This is what you're gonna see when you open it up. This right here is your air filter. This is where you're going to fill the oil. This is a, a part that we've had a lot of issues with, with people not doing it correctly. As per the manual for this machine from Honda, when you fill it, it needs to be on a level plane and you want to fill while it's standing straight up. You want it to come to the last thread right here. So when it's flat and it's like this, that is perfect. This unit calls for 14 ounces total to fill the, the engine up with oil. Any more than that, and you're gonna cause high pressures on the cylinder head. Any lower than that, and as any engine does when it doesn't have oil, it starts to break down. The problems that we've seen have been from people trying to fill the oil by turning this sideways like this, taking the oil cap off, filling it full, putting the cap back on, and then setting it down. That is the easiest way to mess it up. This right here is your carburetor. It has a choke and it has a run, but you cannot actually physically change it. It's maintained by a chip inside that has a predetermined setting for open and closed. As we come to the front of the unit, we have here is the gas fill. Only put gasoline in it. Do not put mixed, do not put diesel, just gasoline. And while you're running it, open this vent on top. When it's not in use, close the vent. Anytime you go to fill this, if it's just been running for the last four hours, obviously let it cool down. If I know you wanna get it back in service, but don't fill it up when it's hot. You have a lot of hot pieces on this machine and that's with any gasoline engine you want to let it cool down before you add gasoline to it when you add gasoline if you spill any of the gas on this part of the machine let it sit let the gas evaporate before you try to do anything with it this is electricity and sparks and gasoline are not good together and on the very front here you see the two outlets 120 every one of them puts out 126 volts whether it's on eco throttle or full throttle. The only difference is, is the amperage that you get from the unit. When you're running this, if you're running more than just trailer lights, you want to have the eco throttle off. If you're using a grinder or something that, that requires a lot of amperage. This side right here, you have the oil alert check. If it blinks red and cuts off after five seconds, that means you need to check the oil, make sure that it has the correct amount of oil. It does have a fail safe in it where if the oil is not filled correctly, it should shut off. And I say should because we've had some that allowed it to go with the wrong amount of oil in it and end up causing damage to the engine. Right above that is your CO minder. This is something that prevents you from hurting yourself. If you turn this engine on and you're indoors and the ambient air gets read by this little thing right here, and it notices that there's too much carbon monoxide in the air, it will cut the engine off and you have to reset it. They do go bad over time. So there might be a moment where it keeps going off. You're out in the middle of an open uh, job site and it keeps cutting that off. At that point, tag it and it needs to come back for service. And for your safety, there's not much on this machine that can hurt you other than this right here. This back here is the exhaust panel. It's covered by this hard plastic, so you really can't get to it unless you accidentally stick your finger right there whenever you go to pick it up and move it. At that point, you will know that you've in fact been burned. So now that we've checked the oil and it's at the correct level, what we're gonna do is you put the bottom end first. There's two little grooves right there. And then you take your nut and you fasten it back. You wanna put it on choke which is all the way forward, turn this switch on. Now it's ready to be started. You don't have to pull this like a 30 year old lawnmower that you've had sitting in your yard. It pulls very easily. A lot of times we end up having to replace these because they get broken off because of that. So just an easy pull. 
Whenever you get it running or started, you want to take the choke and move it all the way back so it's in the correct idle position. On the front of the unit, you should see a green output indicator light. Okay, that's letting you know everything is good. As long as none of these come on and it's maintaining that, you have a working generator that you can use. To cut it off, all you have to do is take this switch on the side right here and turn it off. On these units, they have these little rubber feet right here that are screwed in with a 10 millimeter screw. Do not drag these feet this way or that way. If you can't pick this machine up or use a dolly to move it, let somebody else do it because these feet right here, when one of them wears out, it literally throws the level off of the machine and you'll never be able to get the oil level correct when you go to fill it. Thank you for watching the video on small generators. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or ask your supervisor. We do have manuals on these if you need any further information on them. And remember, always work safe.